Ah, Paraguay. Why would anyone ever care about Paraguay? Just another drop in the bucket for the multitude of Latino countries that most average people don't know too much about, and that's not entirely their fault. I mean, that is a lot of countries with very similar histories, flags, cultures, and most importantly, all fall under the umbrella category of Hispanic, a term which translates basically to a Spanish-speaking country or a country whose demographic base is primarily ethnically Spanish, but there's only one catch with the South American country of Paraguay. A country where, in the not-so-distant past, 70 to 90 percent of its adult male population was killed in one war, a country that once attempted to completely cut off relations with the outside world and create an isolated utopian society, a country that at one point outlawed all non-interracial marriages, interestingly enough, and most importantly, a Hispanic country that doesn't speak Spanish. Paraguayans are kind of seen as weirdos even by other Latinos. The population of Paraguay is unique today for being a highly bilingual state, as very few other countries can claim to have two native languages, a true dichotomy that showcases Paraguay's highly unusual history and portrays it in a highly tangible way, as it remains, to this day, the only country on the planet where a majority of the population speaks an indigenous Native American language but officially, less than 2% of its population identifies as indigenous. White people speaking a Native American language? How could it be? I bet you all thought it was the Spaniards that conquered the Americas, not the other way around. Well, sort of. Paraguay does share a very similar history of conquest to that of its other Latino neighbors, although being the only country in the Americas to have never had a coastline of any kind, Bolivia formerly had access to the Pacific before a war with Chile, naturally Paraguay was far more isolated than coastal cities facilitated by the Spanish in South America early on such as Buenos Aires, Lima, or Montevideo. Now, one would think that Paraguay, lying within the heartland of South America, would be extremely isolated from the outside powers when the Spaniards and Portuguese began to conquer the continent, but unlike the Amazon, the area that became Paraguay was not entirely cut off from the outside world, as the Paraguay River snakes down from the Andes mountain range, which was the western border for the Tawantin Suyu, better known as the Inca Empire. The natives of this land were, and are, known as the Guarani, an ethnic group linguistically and genetically related to many other Amerindian tribes scattered throughout the Amazon, although historically were somewhat involved with the Quechua and Aymara people of the Inca Empire. Spanish conquistadors and missionaries made the 1,000-kilometer trek inland into Paraguay not long after Columbus landed, and soon made contact with the Guarani tribes and the Jesuits, an ancient European society, set up missions, or reductions as they were called, all across Guarani territory. Interestingly, there were very few Spanish settlers in this region outside of the capital Asuncion, established in the 16th century, and many Jesuits learned the Guarani language in order to communicate with the natives, and many Spanish officials learned the language as well in order to ally themselves with the Guarani for incursions against the Incans. Now, this plan of turning the newly Christianized Guarani against the Incans went poorly, although eventually Paraguay fell under complete Spanish control with minor Spanish settlement as a part of the Vice Royalty of Peru and later the Vice Royalty of the Rio de la Plata, which included Bolivia, Argentina, and Uruguay, although Western Paraguay remained mostly untouched. In 1761, those of indigenous descent made up over 60% of Paraguay's population. However, in the following decades, that percentage quickly fell as more immigrants displaced the natives and intermarried, joining in the new mixed-race class of mestizos. An interesting development in the formation of the Paraguayan mestizos is that even though they were generally born through the marriage of European men and Amerindian women, as in all other areas of Latin America, because the Guarani language was already widespread among the government administration of Paraguay and a large proportion of the countryside was still dominated by the native Guarani population, the mestizo progeny were taught both Spanish and Guarani. 
It's also noteworthy that a large population of slaves and emancipated Paraguayans of African descent existed in Paraguay since the 16th century, and around the time of the same 1761 census, it was discovered that those of African ancestry made up nearly 10% of the population, in some areas even outnumbering the European Criollos or Mestizos. It is thought that by the time of Paraguayan independence, the majority of the population was made up of mestizos who were culturally and linguistically more in tune with their native parentage than any other Latino group in the Americas. When Paraguay gained its independence from Spain as a part of the rash of independence movements that swept Latin America in the early 19th century, they started off with rocky footing with their neighbors, especially the comparative giants of Argentina and Brazil, and for this reason retreated into a highly nationalistic, isolationist attitude, closing off their country to immigration and trading with the outside world. This period of Paraguay's history was marked by a string of de facto dictators who, although not necessarily all of ill favor with the public, had varying degrees of eccentricity, such as José Gaspar Rodríguez de Francia, a Paraguayan whose grandfather was an emancipated Afro-Brazilian. For this reason, the infamously unconventional de Francia wished to purge Paraguay of any notions of racial purity or racial supremacy, as seen in other areas of Latin America, and actually made it illegal for those of European descent in Paraguay to marry other Europeans, trying to expedite the process of turning Paraguay's population entirely homogenous. This, of course, only had mild degrees of success, as forcing populations to mix does not simply make their problems go away, contrary to popular belief, and following de Francia's death, the Lopez dynasty was established in Paraguay, which kept many of the same authoritarian and isolationist aspects of de Francia's rule. Francisco Solano Lopez was the president of Paraguay when the most devastating war to hit the Western Hemisphere broke out between Paraguay and its neighbors of Argentina, Brazil and Uruguay, a conflict known as the Paraguayan War, or the War of the Triple Alliance. This war, pitting a small isolationist hermit dictatorship against two regional superpowers, went about as well as you can imagine, and soon devolved into a guerrilla war after the Argentine and Brazilian militaries took Asuncion and occupied the country. The president of Paraguay fought alongside his men until the very end, and even after all his men had been slaughtered, Lopez, defiant until the end and refusing to surrender, was actually killed after the battle by an officer in the Brazilian army, allegedly by hurling a spear into his abdomen. The Paraguayan vice president and secretary of state, who were also active participants in the battle, were also killed afterwards. You just can't make this stuff up. This perfectly illustrates a society that was broken through sheer devastation as the death of the president coincided with the death of the last of the Paraguayan military and virtually the entirety of the fighting age population of males in Paraguay as they fought down to the last man. Argentina actually propositioned to abolish the nation of Paraguay completely and divide its remaining land between itself, Brazil, and Bolivia, but Brazil declined, instead wanting Paraguay to remain as a buffer state between the two. The nation of Paraguay lost around 45% of its pre-war territory, or at least 45% of the territory that it had claims over, shrinking from nearly 900,000 square kilometers to only 400,000. Still quite enormous by European standards, but smaller than every other South American Latino country other than Ecuador and Uruguay, leaving it as a disheveled rump state, but this was the least of the nation's problems following the war. As mentioned near the start, 70 to 90 percent of the adult male population of Paraguay was killed, along with a chunk of the female population through starvation. So although Paraguay's demographics and economy were in ruins, the new government attempted to alleviate this by encouraging men from other countries, mostly those in Europe, to immigrate to Paraguay. In the next century and a half, large numbers of immigrants streamed in from Prussia, including the Mennonites, and Elizabeth Nietzsche, sister of philosopher Friedrich Nietzsche, along with immigrants from Italy, although many Italian Paraguayans may have Italian ancestry through Brazilian immigrants rather than those directly from Italy, and also of importance were immigrants from the Russian Empire, mostly ethnic Ukrainians or Poles who settled in the big cities. 
All the while, Guarani still remained as the lingua franca of Paraguay's population, learned even by many immigrant groups, and even Paraguayan dictator Alfredo Strassner of German parentage took to promoting the Guarani language. In 1992, 37% of Paraguayans were monolingual Guarani speakers. In 2002, this dropped to 27%, and even further to 8% in 2012. Nowadays, as of 2018, as a result of increasing integration with neighboring Hispanic countries, bilingualism is near universal, with nearly the entire population speaking both Guarani and Spanish to some degree, even combining the two languages in everyday speech. Paraguayan communication in large cities and online, to an extent, is a blend of Guarani and Spanish vocabulary known as Hopara, although, as with any other group of people, speaking two native tongues somewhat reduces the fluency in both. A light-hearted joke among neighboring South Americans is that Paraguayans speak two languages, both of them poorly. Language is not the only aspect of Paraguay's culture that retains some degree of Amerindian influence, as despite remaining one of the most faithfully Catholic countries in the world, a large degree of pagan influence can be seen in the traditions and customs of the Paraguayan populace. Despite Paraguayan mestizos being unique for having a higher degree of European blood due to the waves of European immigration following the Paraguayan War, with a large segment of the population still being of recent European ancestry. Paraguay actually remains quite isolated to this day, so much so that they retain one of the smallest diaspora communities of any Latino country, and less than 30,000 Americans are of Paraguayan descent, ranking the lowest out of any Hispanic group in the country, which is probably why Americans tend not to know too much about this country that, although small, has one of the most fascinating histories and modern societies of any Latino nation, and certainly the most unique. Nearing the end of the Paraguayan War, surrounded by enemy soldiers with a spear in his gut, President Lopez hacked and slashed at those surrounding him, allegedly shouting one last time, Muero por mi patria, or I die with my nation. Although Paraguay was indeed dangerously close to being completely wiped off the map in the not-so-distant past, their story is one of perseverance and recovery, being pretty much the only modern country on Earth to have survived a truly apocalyptic scenario and came out the other side with quite the story to tell. Well, a story that can really only be told in their Guarani language, of course. So please, let me know your thoughts on the tragic yet heroic possibly suicidal ballad of the Paraguayans, a nation with mixed German, Italian, Ukrainian, or even Australian ancestry, who for whatever reason remain the only nation on earth to speak a Native American language to this day. And for today's poll, tell me which society is most similar to Paraguay's overall, in your opinion. And as always, thanks for watching everyone. This has been Mason, and I'll see you next time.